G'day, it's Simon and James at South OC Cars and Coffee. You know, mate, I thought we were going to have a quieter one this weekend because last weekend was crazy. The weekend before, 4th of July weekend was crazy. And yet this morning we opened up the cones and the exotics just kept rolling in and rolling in. What have you seen? It is a good day today. It's kind of a big Porsche day. We've got some Pure RSs and two RSs. We've got Aventadors. We've got uh, possibly a Wire and an LFA coming. It's still early on, so we'll have to see if they end up coming out. But a very good selection nonetheless. What have you seen? Yeah, some really interesting things. There was a what is basically a chopped international scout uh, fiberglass body, uh, small block Chev on a uh, S10 chassis. Really strange looking thing, but a few years old, but an interesting build. And I don't know whether he stayed in the show, but I literally saw a trike, Harley, ride through, pulling a trailer that was effectively a hearse. With oh a, yeah, with yeah, a yeah. It's, in the back. it's all the way in the back. Yeah, yeah so okay. I'm uh, dead set excited about seeing that one. Hey, don't forget if you're coming to South OC Cars and Coffee, please remember respect our rules. No speeding, no revving, no burnouts. That includes on the streets of San Clemente and getting on and off those freeways. A stack, see mate, let's go for a walk and check some stuff out. Let's do it. Starting off the Exotics Row with an OG Aventador LP700. Very, very cool. Has some Reventon star wheels with carbon inserts in there. Carbon lip skirts, diffuser wing, everything on this car. Absolutely love this spec. Of course, you can see the 6.5 liter V12 there through the back. Very, very nice. Such a menacing build. I still think the 997 GT3 is such a pretty car. This one is absolutely stunning. One of the early 997s, of course, you can see this kind of cool front end on here. Before the center lock wheels, I'm not sure if they were doing center locks for these, this era of GT3, but so pretty nonetheless. Of course, a big six-speed manual on there made it to the six-cylinder in this car. Very, very nice. Here we have a very tastefully modified 720S. You can see tons of exterior carbon on here, lowered on the factory wheels, which I actually love. They have these diamond cut wheels, massive carbon ceramics, and a very interesting kind of metallic, pearly white silver with the brown interior. This is very, very classy. You can see he has the IMSA sticker on there, which makes me think that he might track this car. What a cool setup. We have the 992 Turbo S cab. This is actually a really interesting spec. So not only is it the cab, has no aero pack on it or anything, so it's really clean, sleek look. But this is actually the first one that I've ever seen that doesn't have center lock wheels, even though it has the carbon ceramic brakes. But nevertheless, a very, very nice spec. Here we have a crazy wide body Urus in the front row. This belongs to the team over at Quantum Carco. You can see this thing has a stunning gloss silver exterior, these massive carbon fiber wide body panels. These are from 1016. Not quite sure whose hood this is, maybe DMC or someone similar but I love the contrast with that blue interior on the inside as well. Just such an aggressive look <laughs> and an aggressive stance to this car. I think if you have a oh, Urus, you need this. Yeah, we have a very cool lineup of Porsches. We have the 991, I think this is a Dart 2 Turbo S next to a 718 GT4, and then finally the 992 GTS. All very, very different cars. Which one out of these three in this lineup would you pick? I think I'm probably going to have to go with the GT4. It's absolutely beautiful. Here we have Austin's crazy McLaren 570 GT. I absolutely love this car. He just got it back from the guys in Navarro for a full big turbo build. You can see this thing has a full 1016 kit on it, the hood, front lip, skirts, wing, everything. This thing is just absolutely wild. I love the kind of exposed carbon two-tone look with the satin wrap on here. Very, very cool. Super tastefully modified. He's done an awesome job with this. Two cars that I wasn't expecting to see side by side. We have an insane Lamborghini Huracan. I believe this is either 580 or 610. Has a full Borsteiner kit, 1016 hood, some other wing on there, but it looks really, really cool. Next to a full kind of Mad Max style C7 Corvette. Um, this thing is just nuts. I mean, it has like a full mesh body on it, off-road wheels. I think it's gonna be the same engine, that same LT1, but it has a blower on it, has a Pro Charger. Very, very cool. A very interesting lineup this morning.
Now, this is not your ordinary Rolls Royce. If you have a look, there's a few little details there. This is Josh. Josh runs Clubhouse Auto Storage. Josh, who did you say that this car once belonged to? I bought this car in 2012 and I got it from Shaquille O'Neal. So, uh, needless to say, it's got some history to it, huh? It's got some history. I bought and sold the car twice. So I bought it from a gentleman that flipped it. So it was Shaq's car. He had the title with Shaquille O'Neal on it. So he flipped it to me. I bought it 12, sold it to one of my customers in 21. My customer wanted to get rid of it. We sold it. And then two months ago, he said, get my car back. Uh, so that's I got, cool. I got the car back. And then now we're storing it in the warehouse. So um, obviously I do sales and storage. So yeah, it's a beautiful car. It's fun to drive. Um, I've got a lot of other stuff, that, but this one is an absolute gem. So let's talk about it. You guys will store people's cars in San Juan Capistrano. That's correct. They want to store cars, but also you buy and sell cars as well. Yeah. And what sort of stuff are you looking for? You know what's crazy? I used to kind of specialize, but I'll buy anything that runs from a thousand dollars to five or six hundred thousand dollars. I bought car collections for millions of dollars, so I just kind of need a shot at it. If I can't help you out with the actual acquisition of buying your car, I'll give you some advice on how you can sell your car. I'll help you run reports, things like that. I can't buy them all, but I'll do as good, you know as much as I can to be helpful. Yeah, good man, Josh. So if you want to find out more, head over to our website. We've got the link on there and some more details. Clubhouse Auto Storage. That's just uh, clubhouseautostorage.com. Really easy to find. Thanks, Josh. Thank Appreciate you. you. Super clean SS RS Camaro here, uh, 1967. Uh, so Gen 1. Have a look at the interior on this car. It's so beautiful. I was talking to the owner earlier. It is the original interior. All this amazing gold even on the doors, as you can see on the other side. Um, obviously uh, automatic, but this car was actually built originally as a showroom car when the Camaro first came out in 1967. So don't believe the uh, manifold would have been on it then, but great car, 327, automatic. Um, so probably, I'm guessing a turbo 350 trans, but uh, the history of these cars is brilliant. Have a look at this chocolate brown Volkswagen here. I mean, classic because it is a split window. Uh, of course, the very first Beatles that came out had no back window. Then they went to a split window. Then they went to what's affectionately known as the oval window. And then, of course, the large back window that we, we kind of know today. And, you know, some of the things like there weren't indicators. Look at these little arms that used to swing out from the side. Such an in interesting little simplistic dash on it. A speedo that goes up to, let's see, 120 mile an hour. I think uh, that might be a little enthusiastic. I think the clock's got more load to hit 120 mile an hour. But what a great car, Survivor car, obviously. That original looking interior in there and this, this chocolate brown color. This car's probably worth some money. It's certainly a collector's car being the fact that it's a split window like that. You know, the sad thing is a lot of people with the split window and with the oval window, when the cars were updated to, to a larger back window, they used to cut the window out and replace it with a larger back window. Now, of course, if you have one of these, you know, you want to put it back if you have one of those, but great old car. Always great to see uh, survivors here. The owner of this car uh, has brought lots of interesting things over the years, and this is one of them. I'm not a saint, you might. Your sugar coated doll is not so pure, my bad. I don't give up. Not something you see every day, the 911 Speedster. Have a look at the hump on the back. That's a bit of a, the telltale. People like either love them or hate them. Um, I think it's very cool. They are very, very rare. You can tell the Speedster in the seat. This back is uh, extremely, extremely cool. They did not do very many of them. It's uh, a great color. It's just beautiful. Nice wheels on it. The, the Fuchs style wheels. I love the checker and the interior as well. Very, very cool. This is a rare car, and I'm sure worth a decent amount of money as well. Well, this is rather cool. 1958 
Pontiac Chieftain. This is a really, really pretty car. Love the paint job. This obviously didn't come from the factory like this with the uh, two-tone and some of the airbrushing that's on it as well. But look at that interior. It's so beautiful. Just wonderful lines in these cars. This is kind of that era when, you know, when you look back at American motoring in this era, uh, Lincoln had come out with a Continental where everything was getting long and slender. So the other manufacturers had to try and catch up as quickly as they could. And this was kind of the interim model for Pontiac, for example, where you can tell they've made the, the they've still got some of the slight wings that we used to see on some of the other cars, but they've become more subtle. And it's it's got these long slender lines, but it's still got that bubble top. It's still got that wraparound glass on the back, and it's still got the wraparound glass on the front. So it was it was kind of an interim car as they sh sh transitioned, for want of a better word, from that bubble top big wing car to try and follow what uh, Lincoln had done with the Continental, the long slender line. So. Uh, it's, an, it's a really important era and you, you only sort of see this for a couple of years in the GM family. You kind of see this in the, the 58, 59, 60 Chevys and then all of a sudden they've made the shift and the same with Pontiac, same as Buick as well. So great seeing cars like this because it is a very unique era. We have a couple of iconic British cars sitting next to each other. The first one, Austin of America. Uh, if you bought this car in the UK, it could have been badged as an Austin, could have actually been badged a uh, similar version as a Morris, like a Morris 1100. There was actually a four-door version as well. In fact, there was a Wolseley version. There was an MG version. There are all these different versions of this particular body style. and subtle differences like on some of them the tail light fins might have been a little bit longer the interior was a little different pretty much all of them ran the similar family of motors which is not dissimilar to what you found in the mini as well but they were typically bigger but obviously front engine east west radiator over on this side over here uh, and just that was the family in this case two door coupe and then your sedan uh, of the UK of that particular era so very iconic Next to it, Series 2 Land Rover. Now, people call these things mistakenly Defenders. Defenders didn't come along until these things became more of a status symbol, for want of a better word. The original Land Rovers, Series 1, Series 2, they were workhorses. In fact, the first ones were designed for farm vehicles, uh, utilitarian farm vehicles, but also for the military as well. Now, Series 2, how do we know? See the headlights are in close together? In later ones, actually brought the headlights out on the side. The theory with bringing them together here was that they actually protected the headlights. These front areas would protect it if you're driving through some thick brush. They moved them out later because you got better lighting by spreading the, the lights out. Now, these cars, if you look in the front, they're all, and the back as well, they're all leaf springs. Uh, very gutless little motor. The original ones had a, like a, a three on the floor. And to say that they're agricultural when you drive them is such an understatement. This thing would be lucky to probably do 60 mile an hour downhill with a tailwind. Um, and it's going to be rattly and shaky and it's not going to handle particularly well. But do you know what? That is exactly what makes this thing so cool. It is purely a military style, agricultural style uh, workhorse. So it's not meant to be some boulevard cruiser. So if you ever look at a Series 1, Series 2 and you go, oh, I'd like that to cruise around. I, I like, I really like um, uh, Defenders. Now drive one before you make that decision. But if you like a really utilitarian thing, whether it's this, whether it's a Land, Land Cruiser FJ45, whether it's an early Nissan Patrol, drive it, fall in love with it. It's just a cool experience. For all of my fellow Australian countrymen, this, yes, is a VF Commodore. Of course, sold over here in the States as a Chevy SS. You can see it badged as a Chevy over here. And just like in Australia, people, well, I'll, I'll keep my opinion to myself, but they put Chevy bow ties on holders in Australia, have done for years. Here, they want to turn them back to what they began their life as, which, of course, was that VF Commodore. The last of the Holdens, unfortunately. LS3, so the same motor that they ran uh, in the uh, club sports, uh, in Australia in the v, uh, VEs as well. Um, great car, the last generation of, of Holden's 
<laughs> which is really super sad because they are a great car. Of course, in Australia, Holden took this through Holden Special Vehicles, did a club sport version with the LSA, the same motor that Chevy used in the uh, ZL1 Camaro and also the CTSV. And then as a last hurrah, they actually fitted the LS9, which of course only got put over here in the Corvettes, the uh, ZR1 Corvette. So you could actually buy a, a Holden Commodore, this body style, slightly different front end, back end, with an LS9 in there as well. Before they closed the factory with an announcing it to anybody they built four utes so imagine the El Camino style with the LS9 they did a yellow one red one white one and black one one of the four has since gone up for sale for 1.2 million dollars so great to see these Holdens out and really sad that Holden as a brand doesn't even exist anymore shame on you General Motors Bonjour, Monsieur and Mademoiselle. Yeah, that's right, this is French, this is Citroën. What a great car, really, really iconic. So many different little safety features in this car. Look at that, the first cars that really had this single wheel steering wheel. They had full hydraulic suspension on them, so you could drive these things on a rough road and they just floated on water. So full hydraulic suspension, that's why it looks like it's sitting so low at the moment. But they're mechanically really interesting cars. If you lifted the hood, you'd actually see the spare wheel sitting under the on top of the engine bay. Uh, then the radiator, a big gap between that and the motor, all part of the safety cell so that if you're in an accident on the front end, uh, you wouldn't be injured. Uh, the overseas models as well would have headlights that would actually, on some of them, turn. So that the first cars with the headlights would actually follow the direction of the wheels, not both of them, two of them. So as you went around a corner, you could see where the light was coming around, around the corners. Um, very interesting car, very comfortable, uh, very, very good car at high speed cruising car as well. Uh, big cult following. You know, some people think they're ugly, other pe people think they're really, really beautiful. So, great to see. I am an absolute fan of the simplicity of this 1969 Camaro. Absolutely wonderful. It's so clean. Is It, it looks all original, is it? It's got an LS3 motor. Uh, it's got an LS3. Very unoriginal, but it looks original. And the interesting thing, it doesn't sound like an LS3. Now, I'm glad I caught this before I drive off as well. This crazy crazy little thing as an international scout um, don't look like one does it it's been obviously looks shorter um, it's this uh, build happened about 14 years ago the owner thinks he bought it this way but it's running an s10 chassis and a small block chevy which he has now punched out to a 383 or was a 350 but a ton of fiberglass and really really cool looking interior in there as well just simplistic but pulled in just interesting right great when we see cars like this Now there's more than meets the eye with this 1956 Ford F100 because this has had a widened front end put on it. You've widened the front guards, haven't you? Widen the whole truck. It looks like about four inches in the front. It's four in the back and running like serious truck. Semi-truck semi, semi -truck wheels, very cool. What's under the hood? Coyote. Isn't that interesting? Harley Davidson trike. Something, well, you don't see every day and they're beautifully engineered and everything else, but what you typically don't see is pulling, effectively, is a hearse trailer. Gentleman over here was just telling me, uh, this is actually a working hearse. I hope there's nobody on the, in the inside. Not today. But these guys do funerals for veterans or anybody else that have had a passion for motorcycles. It's really interesting, isn't it? I mean, the concept of actually having a, a motorcycle hearse I figure if the royal family can have a coach horse drawn one, why can't these guys? And especially doing stuff for veterans, which I think is pretty cool as well. Um, 
if this is something that interests you, make sure to check them out. Highway to Heaven. Um, it's it's a really interesting concept. It certainly has drawn a group of people around it today. And I've got to tell you, just looking at this thing, it's really, really well built as well. So, interesting. That is it for a very busy South Sea Cars and Coffee here this morning. Hey, please remember if you're coming out to the event, respect our rules, no revving, no speeding, and no burnouts. I want to give a massive shout out to all the sponsors. We have the Bracketeer, we're marketing Mazda, Maguire's, Hemmings, Iaxon, Attorney Next Level Auto Protection, 101 Van, Sierra, Ineos, Grenadier, Josh the Auto Buyer, Carbontastic, and of course, Happy Jewels as well. And then I want to say a massive thank you to all the volunteers that come out each and every week to help us put on this event. We could not do it without you guys. If you want to become a volunteer, hit us up on Instagram at South OC Cars and Coffee Merch. So we handle all the volunteer rostering and then while you're over there, check out some of the new hats, hoodies, t-shirts, brand new long sleeve tees as well. Uh, lots of cool stuff. And then if you are volunteering at South OC Cars and Coffee, you get to bring your car in before 8.30 and Ruby's Diner provides a free coffee and donut. Yeah, big thank you to Ruby's for doing that. And also feeding the masses and to the outlets of San Clemente for allowing us to be here. Remember, if you need to do any shopping, go to the movies, go to a restaurant, grab a coffee, whatever, come to the outlet, sell them south. OC Cars and Coffee sent you. Well, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Uh, I won't be here next week, so we probably won't have videos. So the week after, we'll see you back here for another South OC Cars and Coffee. Thank you, guys.